The Ministry of Time, or MOT, is a secret organization in Spain that works for the welfare of humanity. Their job is simple, to travel back in time and erase small anomalies that are going to alter the future in a bad way. At the start, one of MOT's agents, Irene, is seen in 1918 Barcelona, assisting a woman in childbirth. After a lot of struggle, a baby is delivered, and everyone in the room becomes happy. Irene also smiles, but before she can join in the celebrations, she becomes dizzy and falls unconscious. It turns out that she has contracted the deadly Spanish flu, which was prevalent during that time. In fact, the pandemic killed around 50 million people, as it was highly contagious and deadly. Back in the present world, at the MOT secret base, Chief Dr. Vargas is discussing the situation with newly appointed head of operations, Susanna. Vargas believes that bringing Irene back to the present is a big risk, as many people could be infected, or a new pandemic can occur. However, Susanna argues otherwise. She she believes that with proper health protocols and measures, Irene can be rehabilitated and cured. She also asserts that none of their agents should ever be left back in time. Reluctantly, Vargas complies and makes the necessary arrangements for Irene's arrival. Then she is brought back from 1918 Barcelona. The situation is very grim, as Irene is suffering from high fever, and she doesn't even have the energy to speak. The medical personnel take the virus very seriously and wear extremely protective suits to avoid getting exposed. Furthermore, no one is allowed in the medical room, apart from Vargas and a few other medical personnel. 24 hours pass by, but Irene's condition does not improve. No matter what medication she is given, the virus keeps deteriorating her body. Meanwhile, a nurse checks on Irene and leaves the medical room when his shift ends. He then disposes of all his protective gear in a separate room and heads to the canteen. Unfortunately, despite all his precautions, the nurse catches the virus, and he unknowingly spreads it to a few people. After a few hours, the infected begin coughing, and Vargas quickly understands that his worst fears have come true. He confronts the head of operations, Susanna, for her immature decision, but surprisingly, the latter still defends herself. She claims that it's the doctor's fault who didn't use proper equipment to combat the situation. Vargas has had enough, so being the bigger man, he simply leaves her be. In the next scene, a strict quarantine is initiated inside the base, meaning that no one can exit the premises. Moreover, the agents that are on duty in the past are ordered to remain there until everything becomes normal. Vargas then summons all the employees inside the base and explains the situation to them. After a while, Susanna takes over and reassures everyone that there is nothing to worry about. However, at the same time, one of MOT's top agents, Velasquez, falls unconscious. This indicates that the virus has already reached its next stage. Immediately, all the infected patients are brought inside the isolation room, while the others are restricted to their own offices. Vargas checks on Irene and notices that her fever is still high, but now, she has started speaking a little. Shortly after, Vargas checks on the nurse that accidentally spread the virus and draws a sample of his blood. He then puts the sample in his pocket and leaves the room. On the way out, he accidentally spills the sample, and some agents, including his colleague Juan, notice it. However, he lies that it is ink and departs. These guys are about as competent as the government in real life. Meanwhile, searching for answers, some senior members of the ministry contact a popular physician through Skype. He reveals that in the year 1980, a German pharmaceutical company called Schobel tried to create a vaccine by extracting samples from dead people. However, it didn't work, and the company simply disappeared. 24 more hours pass by, but there is still no respite for the patients. The nurse, who inadvertently spread the flu, has since passed away, while Irene and Velasquez are in critical condition. As Vargas wheels the deceased nurse to the examination room, all the MOT employees look on in horror. They are certain that they will be next. That night, Vargas is again on the move this time with a big suitcase in his hand. But his colleague Juan catches him in the act. Vargas explains that he has to urgently go out so that he can get some medication for the patients. Juan knows that something is up, but still, he lets the doctor go. However, the very next minute, he approaches the seniors and informs them that the doctor has breached the quarantine area. He also suspects that Vargas is up to something, as the previous day, he was lying about getting ink on his shirt. It turns out that inside the MOT base, no one uses red ink. After a while, as Juan is discussing with his girlfriend Shauna, they notice an employee wheeling away some antiviral medicine. They are manufactured by none other than the German pharmaceutical company Schobel. It turns out that the company is still functioning to this day. With this, it finally dawns on the couple that Vargas is actually selling blood samples of the Spanish flu patients. Juan and Shauna then immediately relay the information to their senior, leaving him stunned. In the next scene, the senior confronts Vargas for his treachery and threatens to expose him to Susanna. However, instead of being apologetic, 
apologetic. Vargas asserts that he is doing the right thing. He claims that if they keep on delaying for a vaccine to be made inside the MOT, a lot of people will succumb to the virus. So, the best thing to do is hand out samples to Shobel, who already have years of research under their belt. In return, they are providing tons of medical supplies for free. Vargas reveals that he is also getting paid handsomely. Hearing all this, the senior is somewhat convinced, but he still believes that Shobel may use the virus samples for their economic benefit. Perhaps they will create a vaccine and then release the virus in public, which will cause a bigger pandemic and endanger the lives of millions of people. Vargas replies that it is possible, and hence, they decide to stop the samples from reaching the Shobel headquarters in Munich. For the mission, Juan and Shauna are dispatched. They exit the MOT base and wriggle their way inside a nearby building, where Vargas apparently conducted his secret meetings. After this, they slowly approach the medical room. On the way, they are forced to fight and take down some guards. At last, Juan and Shauna reach the medical room and find the virus samples. Surprisingly, they also find some vaccines that were already manufactured by Shobol. The following day, inside the MOT medical room, Vargas injects the vaccine to all the patients, and in a matter of days, they start feeling better. Velasquez is over the moon to get a second chance at life, while Irene is happy that she can finally work now. In this way, a danger is nearly averted, and after 38 days of strict measures, the quarantine is finally lifted. The agents who were trapped in the past also return to their present time. That episode was about as scientifically accurate as a speech from Donald Trump. A few days later, the top agents of the group are having a meeting about an urgent matter. At first, Chief Fernando talks about the University of Spain and its importance to the country. Then, Fernando points out that in the year 1924, a drama play titled Don Juan Tenorio was made, which included several up-and-coming prominent stars. The cover of the drama was made by iconic artist Salvador Dali. However, in the painting, there is a surprising element, a modern tablet. This is a blatant breach of the laws of MOT, and it appears as if one of their agents is messing around. Hence, Chief Fernando wants to send a team to investigate the matter. A reliable agent named Julian will be leading the team in the past, while Irene will be handling everything in the present. That night, everyone suits up in their 1920s attire and heads to MOT's time machine. The next second, they are teleported to the year 1924, right in front of the student residency of the University of Madrid. When they enter, they find the practice of the play going on. The director is very displeased with how the actors are performing, so he's berating them aggressively. Julian and the team get seated in the last row and witness everything. Just then, the director, who still isn't done with his rant, gets exhausted and passes out. A practicing nurse rushes to the scene, but Julian, who's a medic himself, tells her to step aside. Immediately, the director is transported to a room, and Julian finds out that he has diabetes. This is because in the modern world, a person with diabetes is easily identifiable. However, the nurse, who is studying the curriculum of the 20s, is left in utter disbelief. She doesn't understand how Julian was able to find the problem in just a matter of minutes. Over the course of the next few days, the group continues investigating the matter, but no leads are found. However, they do manage to strike up a good relationship with the students. In particular, Julian forms a good bond with the female nurse. But one day, the agents find something very shocking. It is a modern picture of Julian with his wife. It gets even weirder. There is a stamp of MOT behind the picture. This means that whoever is behind the tablet incident wants the group to stop messing around. That night, they return back to the present and show the picture to Chief Fernando. The latter is shocked that someone is going behind their backs and using their time machine. He believes that someone very close to them is the culprit. However, Irene thinks otherwise. She asserts that it is an ex-agent named Lola who is fired for being erratic. As the discussion goes on, Chief Fernando gets some news. It turns out that the legendary painter Dali's earliest painting paintings were sold just a few days ago. This is virtually impossible, because according to history, all his early work was destroyed in a fire. But Julian believes that it makes their case even more believable. Whosoever is messing with them is using the time machine to go back in time, buy Dolly's paintings, and then sell them in the modern world. In the next scene, the group returns to the past, and Julian immediately gets to work. He approaches Dolly and introduces himself as a painter. Julian then asks Dolly about the person who buys all his paintings, but the latter doesn't want to reveal this to a competitor. So, Julian goes for plan B. He asks his team members to tail Dali that evening when he heads out to sell his paintings. Unfortunately, the plan doesn't work, as the buyer spots the spies and doesn't arrive at the scene at all. As Irene had suspected, it is the ex-agent Lola. The following day, while the practice for the drama is going on, Julian receives another photograph. Surprisingly, as soon as he sees it, he becomes upset and leaves the room. The photo is revealed to be of his wife, who died in a car accident. Julian has regular nightmares.
nightmares about the incident, and this proves that whoever is screwing with M.O.T. knows Julian pretty well. That evening, as the group is planning their next move, one of the agents gets a text from Lola. She wants to meet for a private conversation at the church. Wasting no time, the agent reaches the location and finds Lola there. Finally, Lola reveals that she is selling Dolly's paintings in the present, because they are worth a fortune, obviously. She also admits that she mistakenly left her tablet in his room, which was the root of the whole incident. Saying this, she prepares to leave, but at the same time, Julian arrives and arrests her. Lola is disgusted that she was betrayed, but she cannot complain much for all the problems that she has caused. Later, the group returns to the present and Chief Fernando congratulates them on capturing the rogue ex-agent. They then discuss what to do with her, and Julian suggests locking her up for the rest of her life. The next day, the group returns to 1924 for one last time, so that they can bid a proper farewell to their newly made friends. They lie that they are getting transferred to a new university in a different country. This is an important part of time travel, because if someone disappears without a trace, people will start asking questions, and a chain of reactions may be initiated. Yeah, but nothing else that they've done will cause any problems. In the final scene, Julian uses the time machine to do something illegal. For years, he has been haunted by the death of his wife, so he wants to alter the timeline and save her. On that fateful day, she was struck by a car while jogging. Lola reveals that she is selling Dolly's paintings in the present, because they are worth a fortune, obviously. She also admits that she's painting in the present, because they are worth a fortune, obviously. She also admits that she mistakenly left her tablet in his room, which was the root of the whole incident. Saying this, she prepares to leave, but at the same time, Julian arrives and arrests her. Lola is disgusted that she was betrayed, but she cannot complain much for all the problems that she has caused. Later, the group returns to the present and Chief Fernando congratulates them on capturing the Rogax agent. They then discuss what to do with her, and Julian suggests locking her up for the rest of her life. The next day, the group returns to 1924 for 